Good morning, children. Here we are starting with a new chapter today, that is generally accepted accounting principles, which is commonly known as GAAP. In this chapter, we will study various principles on which the accounting treatment of a number of items is based. This is the part one of the chapter. Let us understand the meaning of gap first of all. As you can read, accounting statements disclose the profitability and solvency of the business to various parties. It is therefore necessary that such statements should be prepared according to some standard language and set rules. Just like in the introductory videos, in the previous videos, we have studied that there are a number of users of accounting information. There are a number of parties who requires the information related to books of accounts so that to serve them with proper accurate data, it is required that accounting is done based on some kind of rules, some kind of principles. So these rules are usually called generally accepted accounting principles that is GAAP. These principles have been generally accepted by accountants all over the world as general guidelines for preparing the accounting standards. So GAAP it means that GAAP is the generally accepted accounting principles or the rules or the principles which are followed universally to prepare books of accounts and accounting statements. So this is the meaning of gap. Then there are two kinds of accounting principles. As you can see, accounting principles can be classified mainly into two categories that is accounting concepts or assumptions and accounting conventions. So there are two types of accounting principles children. One is accounting concepts or we can say accounting assumptions and another one is accounting conventions. So a basic difference is that accounting concepts or assumptions are generally followed universally by each and every accountant as a part of compulsion. But accounting conventions are a little bit flexible. It depends upon the organization to either follow it or edit it or adapt it according to its need. Let us discuss accounting conventions in detail. An accounting convention may be defined as a custom or generally accepted practice which is adopted either by general agreement or common consent among accountants. So these accounting conventions are a custom or generally accepted accounting practice. These are not as part of compulsion but these are depending upon the mutual consent of the accountants. Following are the main accounting conventions. These are the accounting conventions which are, we are going to study. The first convention is convention of full disclosure. As the literal meaning of the word suggests, full disclosure means this convention or this principle requires the accountant and the accounting statements to disclose each and every information. It requires that all significant information relating to the economic affairs of the enterprise should be completely disclosed. That means each and every detail, whether it is a small detail or a very important detail, irrespective, each and every detail must be presented in books of accounts in accounting statements. Even the information are too small or very less important. Maybe they are not very much important and maybe 
if we disclose that the accounting statements might become bulky might become huge so in order to protect that those less important uh, information can be supported in case in uh, by way of appendix or footnotes but this convention requires that every detail should be mentioned either as the main part of the accounting statements or by way of footnotes various items or facts which do not find place in accounting statements are shown in the balance sheet by way of footnotes such as contingent liability we have discussed this term in the terminology chapter that there are certain liabilities which are not actual liability but it may become a liability on happening of a certain event so this convention of full disclosure requires us to show that contingent liability also though as a footnote disclosing of material facts does not mean leaking out the secrets but dis disclosing the sufficient information to the users of financial statements when we are saying that we have to disclose everything it doesn't means that the confidential policies or the secrets of the firm or or the business should be revealed no but all the material information all those information which are of some use to the users of accounting that must be shown the second convention is convention of materiality it is somewhat contradiction or the contradictory convention to the convention of full disclosure convention of full disclosure says that the business should show or mention each and every detail each and every information in the accounting standard uh, accounting statements whether as a main part or by a way of footnote but convention of materiality states that we have to show only those information which are of some use and not other information otherwise the accounting statements might become bulky so it depends on the organization which convention it needs to adopt as you can see convention of materiality it is an exception to the convention of full disclosure according to this convention items having an insignificant effect that means which doesn't make much difference or being irrelevant to the user need not be disclosed these since these unimportant items are either left out or they are merged with some other items otherwise why these things are done why these less important or unnecessary items are ignored because otherwise statements will become unnecessarily bulky or overburden so this was convention of materiality the third convention is convention of conservatism or prudence this is a very important conservatism or convention which every organization needs to follow basically this convention is playing safe it states that we should anticipate all possible losses and we should ignore all possible gains that means before hands only we are expecting that there might be some uncertainty in the future so that we have to be prepared for it so this is the principle or convention of conservatism it is also known as convention of prudence as you can see according to this concept all anticipated losses should be recorded in the books of accounts but all anticipated or unrealized gains should be ignored that means we should expect some kind of losses or unexpected expenses so that we are prepared for it but we should not expect any kind of gain so that we are safe even if the gain does not occur it is the policy of playing safe provision is made for all known liabilities and losses even though the amount cannot be determined with certainty provision here means keeping aside certain amount of money for certain specific purpose for example if you are using furniture or machinery in your business no doubt with the passage of time year after year since you are using the furniture and the machinery 
definitely the value of that particular machinery or asset or furniture will go on decreasing from year to year because of the usage so you have to be prepared for that reduction which is known as basically which is known as depreciation depreciation means the reduction in the value of fixed tangible assets so that depreciation amount you have to kept as keep aside so that is known as provision for depreciation or we have discussed a term debtors debtors means those institutions or people who owe some money to the business that means business will have to receive money from the debtors so many a times it happens that our entire debtors do not pay the money some of them become bankrupt or insolvent and hence they fail to return the money which is known as bad debts so we have to be prepared for bad debts as well in advance so these preparation in advance making the provisions etc which we know that it might happen in the future is a part of convention of conservatism then another example discussed here is closing stock is valued at cost price or market price whichever is less the closing stock means as we have discussed in the previous videos the stock which is lying unsold at the end of the accounting year or accounting period the stock which we could not sell and it is lying unsold at the end of the accounting year is known as closing stock so there is there are two values of stock one is the cost price that means on which we have purchased it or we have produced it and the other one is the market value which is actually occurring or appearing in the market so closing stock we will record at the cost price or market price whichever is less because it might happen that we have purchased it for more the cost price is more but since the market value is less so definitely when we are going to sell it we will be fetching less amount of money so we cannot record it at higher price because in future ultimately we will be receiving the lesser one so we will value it at cost price or market price whichever is less and this is according to the convention of conservatism or prudence then another example which we have discussed a term that is contingent liability so recording contingent liability is also somewhere a part of convention of conservatism that we are playing safe that it might happen that in future we have to bear that particular liability if we do not have to bear very good but even if the mishappening happens and we have to bear it then in that case we will be prepared in advance so these three were the accounting conventions one was convention of full disclosure then second was convention of materiality and third was convention of conservatism or prudence so i hope these conventions are clear to you in the upcoming videos we will be discussing accounting concepts in detail this is the assignment based on this part you have to answer the following question in your register question number 1 is what is meant by gap the answer to this question will be gap stands for generally accepted accounting principles these are the rules or the principles which are universally accepted by accountants to prepare accounting sta statements on common parameters second question classify the types of accounting principles here you can make the chart or you can write it in numbering or bullets as you wish the answer will be there are two types of accounting principles firstly accounting concepts or assumptions and secondly accounting conventions question number 3 what is convention of full disclosure the answer will be convention of full disclosure states that the books of account should reveal each and every information whether is it is insignificant or significant nothing should be hidden and each and every detail should be mentioned in the books of accounts those 
information which are of less importance can be shown as a footnote in the balance sheet question number 4 what is convention of materiality convention of materiality states that the books of account should show only the significant information or only those information which are of some material use and it should not show those items which are insignificant either these insignificant items should be left out omitted or they might be they should be merged with the other items otherwise the accounting standards statements will become more bulky or overburdened question number 5 what is convention of prudence or conservatism also give its example so convention or as we can say of prudence or conservatism states that an organization should play safe it should anticipate all possible losses and should ignore all possible gains it should provide for its known and unforeseen liability well in advance for example closing stock is valued at cost price or market price whichever is less or even the contingent liabilities are estimated and recorded etc question number 6 which principle states that financial statements should disclose all significant information information that is the convention of full disclosure question number 7 closing stock is valued at lower of cost or realizable value that is the market value which principle of accounting is applied here that means which principle states that closing stock should be valued at cost price or realizable or market value whichever is less so the answer to this question will be the convention of conservatism or prudence question number 8 due to which of the accounting principles contingent liabilities are shown in the balance sheet again the answer to this question will be convention of full disclosure then question number 9 omission of paise and showing the round figures in financial statements based on which of the following or which of the accounting principles so the answer to this question will be convention of materiality because we are not so showing each and every detail of paise even we are rounding it off in the nearest rupee so we are showing only the material information so answer to this question will be convention of materiality question number 10 according to which convention is the cost of a small calculator is accounted as an expense and not shown as an asset in a financial statements of a business entity the answer to this question as well will be convention of materiality that we are since the small calculator is an asset no doubt but it is a very insignificant asset very small amount very small asset so here we are including it as an expense we are merging it with the expense so therefore it will be convention of materiality i hope the part discussed in this video is clear to you children go through the video once again revise the conventions and do complete all your written work in your copies thank you children